Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Box Bounty video. So as promised on yesterday's video, this video is going to be a roundup of all of today's reveals from the Hasbro Star Wars Fan First Wednesday livestream for both the Vintage Collection and the Black Series. We have a lot to discuss and look at including some pretty awesome pipeline reveals. So if you enjoy the vid, don't forget to drop a like down below and subscribe if you're new. Most of these figures will be available to pre-order tomorrow at 1pm Eastern Standard Time or 5pm UK Time. And as always, I will be posting links as soon as I have them on all of my social media channels. Alright then, with all that being said, let's start with the Vintage Collection. And first of all, they did briefly talk about Figure in Dan, which was revealed yesterday like a sneak peek. I did make a video about that yesterday, so if you haven't checked out that video, it is on the channel for you to check out after this video. So we haven't really got too much to add about that, apart from the fact that they did say that the full band will be available sometime in the future. So it'll be interesting to see how they do that because I do believe there are five band members with five different instruments and we've only got the one figure with the three instruments so it'll be interesting to see how they do that obviously we've had four packs already maybe they could put another figure in there to make a five pack or perhaps you get the one on the card and then the other four band members in a box set so we'll have to wait and see what they do with that next they showed us Shea Vizsla which is a kind of a reissue but it has been included in their gaming greats offering this time the figure includes an all new head sculpt which was very much needed in my opinion. I think most people would agree that it was the head that always let that figure down. They are keeping the same card back image as the original release including the expanded universe logo. Now this figure is pretty expensive on the secondary market so it will please a lot of people that missed out first time around and also people that need her for their loose collections. Next up for the gaming greats, we have Lando Calrissian in his Hawaiian tropical shirt. Now this one disappointed me ever so slightly as they have chosen to release him on a Battlefront 2 card when I personally think this should have been on a solo a Star Wars story card to go with all the others that we've had. At the end of the day, we did originally see him in this outfit in solo, so I just think it would have been nice to be on that card. Not taking anything away from the figure, however, I do like it, even though it is a repaint. I think they've done a pretty good job, and I look forward to getting it in the line. It wouldn't be my first choice for a figure, far from it. I certainly wouldn't want it in the main line, but as a gaming figure, I think it's pretty cool. Moving on to the main line releases, we have three figures to look at, all of which will be in the Figure in Dan wave. So if you want the whole wave, check out Entertainment Earth in the US or Star Action Figures in the UK. Links will be in the description below. You can order that wave as a whole wave right now if you wanted to. First up, we have the Arc Trooper Jesse, which is a straight repack from the Arc Trooper 3 pack. It's the final release with Fives and Echo already in the line pretty disappointed with the card back if i'm honest he has such a cool tattoo on his head it's definitely the best head sculpt out of the three and they chose to use an image with him wearing the helmet which was a bit of a wasted opportunity in my opinion still it's good to complete the three on their own single card backs and it's one more figure to add to the clone wars line next up we have the death watch mandalorian airborne trooper from the clone wars now this figure looks absolutely awesome it looks very very similar to the death watch mandalorian that we've already got from the mandalorian tv show and no doubt shares some of the parts but the paint deco is different enough to distinguish between the two and to be honest the death watch figure is such a good figure that i'm more than happy for them to reuse it over and over again for all of the mandalorian figures that we still need to get the card back is okay nothing too crazy but another figure to add to the Clone Wars card backs that we already have. This wave is full of Clone Wars figures with the final figure rumoured to be the pipelined 332nd Ahsoka Trooper. So to round off to make four in the wave we have the Mandalorian Super Commando Captain. Now apparently this is modelled on the season three character that captured Duchess Satine which is pretty cool. Once again the figure is great and no doubt uses many parts from the other Mandalorian figures as I've mentioned before. But of course, with that Mandalorian sculpt being so good right now, I'm very happy for them to do so. Of course, being a Mandalorian loyal to Darth Maul, the helmet has the iconic horns and the armour has the red and black paint apps. I've got to admit that I have been looking forward to this figure ever since the Black Series had a similar figure released in the 6 inch scale. I like the card back for this one, I like the red and they do seem to have captured the character pretty well. Nothing too crazy about it again, but... It's going to go very nicely with all the others that we already have. 
Next up, they also revealed another vintage collection four pack, and this time they have gone with the Death Troopers. This one is a super easy one for them to do with the figure already being released twice in the line, once on the Rogue One card back and once on the Mandalorian card back, albeit the figures being slightly different with the Rogue One, including the Pauldron and the Mandalorian version without. So I think in this pack you get one with the Pauldron, three without, so blatantly just an army builder pack this one if you can get it because i do think once again it is exclusive to the disney store and hasbro pulse sigh they also showed us four pipeline reveals for the vintage collection and all four of them being pretty exciting i have to admit first up we have the clatoonian raider which from what I understand will be a repack of the one that came with the ATST Raider. I know for a fact that this will please some people because a lot of people maybe didn't want the vehicle but they wanted the figure that came with that ATST Raider. It is a great figure and it'll be really really nice to have him on his own card back. We also got to see the Artillery Trooper which is a simple repaint for them to do but definitely a character that we need and of course hopefully he'll come with that mortar. Also we have Luke Skywalker from the Mandalorian can't wait to see how they do that one uh, pretty sure it'll be a deluxe figure with accessories and things like that but we don't know for sure just yet the dark trooper is the next one and this one will no doubt be a deluxe figure i can't see them doing this one any other way but i'm sure like me you're going to be super excited about this one this is definitely a figure that we need in the vintage collection and i just cannot wait to see the figure in the flesh to see some images of it i think it's going to be an awesome release Sticking with 3.75, there was another retro collection prototype figure revealed, this time in the form of Chewbacca. Now, I've got to admit, I am getting a little bit bored of these now. The only thing really about this that's any good is the card art. I quite like the card art for these. But I think with Hasbro, sometimes they have a really good seller and then they just go overboard with it. I think, you know, we saw that with the credit collection in the Black Series, the Carbonize in the Vintage Collection. You can have too much of something and I think with these retro collection prototype figures after this one it, it's time to stop them basically. Moving on to the Black Series and a figure that I would absolutely love in the vintage collection it is Saw Guerrera from Rogue One. Now I have to say that they have done an amazing job on this one it does look fantastic and due to its size it will once again be a deluxe figure. It seems these days that anything that needs any type of investment automatically becomes a deluxe figure with a higher price tag. Man, I don't know what to say about these, but at the end of the day, I'm sure all you Black Series collectors will want this one in your collection and will no doubt buy him. But when they get to him in the Vintage Collection, I do hope that they add a soft goods cape. Not that I don't think the Black Series one looks good, but I just think with a 3.75 inch figure, figures always look better with a soft goods cape. Also revealed was another gaming greats figure this time they revealed sev which will go nicely with the previously revealed republic commando figures this one will be exclusive to gamestop in the us and zavi in the uk again i will provide links as soon as i have them black series also got three figures from the publishing series with the redeemed darth vader which is basically a vader all in white Princess Leia Organa from the comic, which looked pretty good actually, I thought that was the best of the three. And Sergeant Creel. All three will be in those funky boxes with nice artwork, ones for the inbox collector no doubt. Pipeline figures for the Black Series included Grogu, which was a bit strange, they've already had him. I'm guessing he comes with his Pram accessory, which you've had in multiple packs already, so that one was a bit strange, I've got to admit. But you also got a pipeline for Migs Mayfeld from Season 1 of The Mandalorian, which I'm insanely jealous about. I would absolutely love that figure in the Vintage Collection. Finally, they revealed a Black Series helmet, this time Trapper Wolf from The Mandalorian. If wearable helmets are your thing, then you will probably like this. I've got to admit it did look pretty good. They aren't really something I collect, so I can't really comment on it too much. So there you have it, all of the reveals from the Hasbro Star Wars fans first Wednesday. Some good, some bad, some plain ugly, but once again, nice figures to look forward to in the Vintage Collection. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and check the community tab here on the channel for all of the links that you will need tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you on the next one.